it is yet another episode here it's like media tv where we profile women this women's month uh today we are joined by linda masarira who has been in political activism she's now the president of a political party lead linda masarira welcome to slime media tv thank you so much Shara. Uh, we want to talk about uh, cyberbullying. We have uh, noticed that for the recent past years, since social media has taken over in Zimbabwe, women have suffered uh, cyberbullying a lot. And in your line of work, you have also suffered that yourself. Can you please explain on that and how did you manage to cope? Um, thank you for that very pertinent question, Sharai. What is important before you interrogate the cyberbullying is to look at the source of the cyberbullying. Intolerance, toxicity, political um, polarization, where a certain grouping of people feel that if you do not belong in the political party that I belong to, or do not support a political leader that I support, you are an enemy, you are a sellout, you do not deserve to even breathe. There are some people who even gave themselves a godlike status and decided to discriminate against anyone who does not believe in what they believe, which is actually a violation of every other person's constitutional rights. It is said that we've got a certain section of our population that has decided to discriminate against other Zimbabweans because they do not believe in what they believe in. At the end of the day, we are all born differently. We've got different political preferences, different religious preferences. Even Uchirai, when you're looking for a man, what you like in a man is not what I like in a man. So I don't know where this tomfoolery comes from, where people expect you to like what I like because we are two very different people. But from a certain angle, we need to understand the systematic elbowing out of women in politics. It is systematic, it is well coordinated, well choreographed, and cyberbullying, body shaming, insults, name calling has actually been used as a weapon against women because it takes away the credibility of a woman candidate, it takes away the, 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 the dignity and morality of a woman candidate. So we should just not look at it as cyberbullying. It is actually something that is systematic, that is planned where people sit down and actually do um, sequencing of how you post and you actually have a certain grouping of trolls that follow every post that you put in. So at the end of the day, we are facing um, some form of cyber terrorism which is fueled by a political intolerance and from my perspective I think that has to stop because the Constitution of Zimbabwe is clear about the issue to do with non-discrimination in section 56 of the Constitution and we also have political rights that are clearly enshrined in section 67 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe that every Zimbabwean has got the right to support a political party of their choice you do not have to gag me Shorai that I do not support the party that you support you do not have to insist insult me because I do not support the political leader that you support. I am my own person. I've got the right to support what I want to support and I've got the right to follow a political party that I want to follow. The biggest challenge is no one has been speaking these truths. There's no civic education in Zimbabwe. People think that they just have to follow Kunecha Unga and they let go of their guard where they have to choose a political party of their choice, a political party leader of their choice based on issues, based on ideology and based with um, on how a political party ideology resonates with personal aspirations. What we've had in this country is people just say, Stadium. Politics is about numbers. At the end of the day, politics is just not about numbers. It's about transformation. How is it transforming your own livelihood at a personal level? How is it transforming the place where you work at an organizational level? Because politics is all about who gets what, where, and how. But if we're not going to be looking at that and reducing ourselves to, to mob psychology, I think we've got a very long way to go as Zimbabweans. How cyberbullying has impacted me and my work as I have found myself being an enemy of many because they've just been following what a certain crowd is saying. But when now that we're progressing and most of the things that I've said have come true since 2018, people are not paying attention saying, but 
Let us say this in 2018. Let us say this in 2021. We're not paying attention because we're just following what a certain crowd or grouping of people were saying. So at the end of the day, I think it is important for Zimbabweans to exercise independent clarity of thought when they're making decisions and not just to follow a certain crowd without introspecting without interrogating what exactly is happening i think we'll be going somewhere when we start applying pragmatism when we want to make decisions okay uh linda you spoke about um harassment in your line of work which is politics what are legal uh, protections that we have in place in Zimbabwe? Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know <laughs> which is the right word to use. We now have a cyber law in, in place. But what is really worrisome is that there is no legal enforcement. There are a number of cases that I've reported to the police and to date most of them have not been actioned yet because we do not have the the law enforcement uh, officers who are um, trained enough to handle these issues who understand how to handle cyber crime cyber bullying etc etc so we've got a long way to go and i would like to implore the minister of home affairs to ensure that they take their police uh, officers to proper training maybe abroad so that they can know uh, how to handle the cyber bullying the cyber crimes that continue to happen time and again and that we also have magistrates who will be able to understand what what it entails for 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 a certain case to be deemed a, a crime because what we have is just the law and we do not have those laws interpreted in the criminal codification act so sometimes when you get to the police they'll just record and say we do not know which 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 violation uh has which violation this case has violated so these are the issues that we're going through that there's been no alignment whatsoever with the with the cyber law that 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 was actually enacted was it two years ago and the criminal codification act that's why you see that most of the cases that have been reported are still hanging at our police stations here in zimbabwe so a lot still needs to be done by zrp by the home affairs ministry to ensure that um the process is expedited so that we can get justice from the cyber bullying gendered disinformation etc etc Okay, uh, there are so many cases which have been rising that women face sexual harassment in their line of work. Have you yourself ever faced that? Plenty. Can you Plenty. please elaborate on that? Um, I remember in 2017 when I was making a decision on whether I was going to run or not. I was still in the People's Democratic Party. Um, one of the leaders actually wanted to sleep with me for me to be able to run under their party as a candidate for Arrow Central. And I was clear that I wasn't an object and I was not going to ban him so that I could get a seat and that if I was going to do anything, I was going to run as an independent candidate. If you remember, that is when I launched my independent candidacy for another central seat because there's a certain v a value that I attach to myself. I do not have to be someone's object or someone's concubine for me to make a mark politically, for me to represent the people. But uh, women have been reduced to that in most political parties where if one wants to participate, they're told a whole lot of conditions. And it is said that we are still that archaic when it comes to political representation. And I would, I would allude that to the lack of financial independence lack of financial capacity especially by women for them to be able to juggle through the the nasty dirty political terrain we have in our country it is sad and absurd but this is some of the truths that i have to say that most men actually pay their way to be candidates they buy people because they've got the financial muscle but most women do not have that financial muscle that is why i'm always speaking out and telling women to start being independent, to start having their own properties, their own businesses, their own money. Because if you do not have money, you will not survive in our political economy. You will not survive in our political terrain because it is highly monetized. And for you to survive, most women have actually survived. Wakarembera, the masculine, stronger political men who then become their shield in the, in the political jungle. So that is how messy our political terrain is. 
and we still need to do a lot to make sure that women are financially independent and it also it also starts from the mindset young women are supposed to stop um that archaic way of thinking that i have to get married to a rich guy a guy with an iphone a guy with a big car the mindset should now go to i have to work hard buy my own iphone buy my own car start my own company you know what i was telling you outside women in journalism in zimbabwe you disappoint me we only have i think one or two uh, newsrooms that are run by women but we've got many women journalists in this country what is stopping you from starting your own initiatives this is what we want to do we want to empower women we want women to have their own money we want women to be able to stand up and say no to sexual harassment one of the primary reasons why women continue to be harassed is that they're not financially strong and sometimes they face that harassment but they don't realize that they're being harassed because they think that I really want this so bad so if I do this it's not a problem it's a one thing a once of thing but it never becomes a once of thing because whoever has given you money to campaign will come back again and want more favors from you and you cannot deny them because they'll tell you they'll get you recalled there you know and at the end of the day we have had a lot of MPs councillors who are useless because sometimes you want to go and 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 move a motion but whoever pays the piper determines the song of the tune they'll tell you you're not going to move that motion because you also lose your voice in the process. So we want empowered women, financially independent women, who are able to stand for themselves and say, I'm going to do this. But as long as you're not financially independent, you become a pushover. Okay, um, you spoke of uh, sexual harassment where you were almost harassed uh, by a certain leader. Would you care to uh, tell us which uh, political party were you affiliated with by that time? I told you I was at the People's Democratic Party. And beyond that, I think my political journey has been mad by sexual harassment time and again. I've been called Hure plenty of times. I've been harassed because of my, my body. And there's, there's a lot that happens almost on a daily basis. And, but that has never weighed me down. And that has never stopped my resolve because I know what I want. I do not beg anyone for a cent. I take care of myself. So at the end of the day, if someone thinks that if they harass me or insult me, I'm going to lose an eye or lose an arm. I still have both eyes, both arms. I've never lost anything from the harassment. It only shows that we've got a broken social fabric and people need to fix their lives. Well, sometimes when you look at some of the things that are typed on social media, it's an indicator of mental issues. A lot of people are sick, but they don't even realize that they're sick. So I actually implore all those who thrive or who boast about being the, the chibaba, chesaiba bullying or chimama, chesaiba bullying, to go and get mental uh, health, uh, their mental health checked, to visit shrinks and counselors, because there's something definitely wrong with them. Okay. Recently we have heard uh, cases of suicide where girls commit suicide after they have been uh, abused on social media. What steps can Zimbabwean women take to protect themselves from cyberbullying? Um, it is said that some people are not strong enough to, to face the challenges of the cyberbullying. But at a personal level, I've made it a habit that whenever I see any woman being cyberbullied, I'll track them down and help them cope with uh, the psychosocial uh, effects of cyberbullying. And it's obvious that sometimes you can't reach out to all of them, but to those that I've managed to reach out, I tell you they, they're empowered, they're strong, and they actually made lemonade out of the lemons that were thrown their way. And I think it is also important for women not to throw everything about their lives on social media because you don't know how it's going to hit back. Secondly, I think one lesson that a lot of women should know is they should stop this posting of nude pictures or taking videos whilst in their intimate moments because you don't know how that picture is going to be used. And sometimes this gadget can get lost. People have got ways of opening up these phones and then your pictures are on social media and that's something else. The way we handle some of these things is different. We're born differently, like I said earlier. There's, the emotional effects might be too hard on us. But what is important is for us to be able to secure what we hold dear by not just doing it. 
If a man loves you, ga ku ode kamuri mese. Shema picture ja zeti, because picture yos kwecha shandiswa kana kwecha tumirwa. So women need to wisen up and stop sending these nude pictures or whatever when they are in love, because you don't know what love ya chenu perarini. If buried people divorce, what about just said afi? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Linda. There are different sectors in Zimbabwe, and we've heard reports of uh, sexual harassment in those uh, sectors. Uh, is there any specific sector in Zimbabwe which we can say that sexual harassment is more prevalent? Um, from my perspective, sexual harassment is prevalent in every sector. It is just a case of certain sectors not having reported what is happening in that particular sector. Mm -hmm. You remember, I think was it three, four years ago, 2019, mm -hmm. when uh, we had that demonstration at Zimbra with those Zimbra women, you were there, you were taking the footage. Those women had, had come to look for me because they were not being promoted. They were actually being transferred to the most remote areas because they denied their bosses sexual favors. So you find that these things happen in most organizations, but sometimes women are afraid of speaking out because they're afraid of losing their jobs. You know how harsh our economy is. And sometimes some women will just end up succumbing and say, ah, Basarika Perando Zoita say. And sometimes it's a single mother and they're wanting to weigh the cost of being unemployed because they want to balance principle and all that. So what is important and what I'm loving right now is that there are now stand measures being put in place to cap sexual harassment. So it is important for women to be able to speak out in their different workplaces. I've been giving a lot of advice to trade unions to have women's desks that deal particularly with issues that are affecting women at the workplace so that they'll be able to come out freely um, and, 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 and put in their complaints about sexual harassment, etc., etc., and that they'll be dealt with at union level and taken into to, to litigation. It is important for people to speak about how they've been forced into this sexual relations, the undue influence, so that we get litigation for this. But he's well connected, he's politically connected. There is nothing like that. You should never succumb to horizontal gymnastics because of the chef. Women need to be bold. Women need to stand out and speak out and defend their bodies. We've never had men being sexually harassed. Why is it it is only the girl child who faces sexual harassment from birth? You are at tertiary institution, lecturer, I don't know, the boy child at tertiary institutions. I don't know how men get promoted. Are they giving their behinds to these bosses or what? Why is it every time is the woman on her body power? What are the men giving for them to be, to be promoted? Why is it when the men see a woman every time they are seeing lunch, they are seeing dinner, that attitude should stop. When people are at work, they should do what they've come to do at work and go to their different homes. Uh, there are some instances that I remember some time back where you could go and confront men who have maybe physically abused their women. I remember the incident one, for example, in Budiriro. <laughs> Can you please uh, tell us more about that project? Is this still going on? And how many cases have you dealt with so far? Um, these days, we no longer go to attack the person physically. We actually help people to get justice. Um, and that is something that I've never stopped. Right now we're actually dealing with a case of another woman whose children got abducted and now we're at Interpol level. So every day there's some sort of work that I'm doing to ensure that women get justice from the GBV that they'll be facing from their boyfriends, their husbands, spouses, partners, you name it. There's a lot of violence that is going on in relationships and it is important for women to always know that they're not pawns that they're not objects, that they're also equal beings as enshrined in the constitution of Zimbabwe. But the biggest challenge we have is women always have this tendency of thinking that if they're in the relationship, they're the weaker one, they can be kicked, uh, they can be clapped, they can have all sorts of injustices happen. And then some will actually say, Doro, Doro, Acho, Hatikabi is showing me that he loves me. No, 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 no. Hakuna love very violent, love very soft. 
the moment love becomes violence, it's no longer love. So people should know when to draw the line. Kind of circuit of squeet, I leave. It's better to leave than to become the late. So I'm always imploring women that don't stay in violent relationships. It's not worth it. Your mental health matters. Your emotional health matters. But vakadzi, we've got a tendency. We don't change it as you know. I'm not ashamed to have been married four times. I left violent relationships. I left abusive relationships. People can insult me that I've been married plenty of times. But what mattered to me the most was my mental health, was my emotional health, the well-being of my children. Sometimes we end up raising violent children. We end up raising children with attitude because they are seeing their mothers being abused day in and day out in the name of marriage. So at the end of the day, the men in this country need to be taught to respect women because they've got no respect whatsoever for women. And that is something that even needs to be legislated. We've got countries like Botswana. You cannot even point at a woman. If you point at them or even scream at them, you get arrested. Once we get to that stage where we've got the men in this country respecting women, I think we'll be able to also decrease the levels of gender-based violence in this country. The men in this country feel they can just hit a woman willy-nilly at any time and they think it's their right because they have visa lobola. And sometimes they also not as in actual visa, which are gonna send at all the violent. Was a shame with Saka Chirupa if it's in the social sims and rogo, second and do a kura mimbe moon yo chi, you know? So it is important for women to start having their pride to start working for themselves, to be financially independent, and not at the expense of their emotional health. I know how an abusive relationship can affect you emotionally. That is why I always tell people, have self-pride, be proud of yourself, carry your load with style, and anything that's not working, just throw it away. You will always find love at the end of the tunnel. I eventually found love. I'm happy, it's non-violent, and I think I found my soulmate. Sometimes you know, Gomera or Panjimbu, Parkuku frustrated, you're not happy, you can't even go out, you can't even enjoy life just because you're thinking you didn't deploy Papu. Love is sweet and it's meant to be enjoyed, not to shed tears day in and day out. You spoke of Botswana laws and comparing ourselves to Botswana. Is the government doing enough to make sure that women are protected? No, the government is not doing enough. And I'm still on my way to Minister Monica Mchongwa's office to, to say I think it's time we do an audit on how women's issues are being um, reflected on in this country. We've got a lot of laws that support women's rights, but there's no enforcement. So it is important for us to start being the champions of our rights and to ensure that the laws protect us from the violent men that we gave birth to in this country. Okay, uh, you say the government is not doing enough, but how can the community get involved as well? Because some of the things are happening and the neighborhood is watching. You know, I've always said a people who are taken away from their history or who do not know their history are as good as dead. In our own African traditional value systems, it was actually a taboo to hit a woman. Why taught ukarova mkazi wako wakarora wayenda kunoripa? But because everyone has become so Eurocentralized, people have disconnected from their traditional value system. They no longer know how revered a woman was in our own traditional value systems. That is a taboo. Made it a reality and took it back to the society. Long back, a man would only take another wife because that I can no longer maybe satisfy you. A man could only take another wife because he had the right, the sole right to go and take another woman. Quite a nonsense. I told one of my six 
he ndochivana kuna chivano chakavhumu chaka chaka chakaita sei chakavhumu kere kana chakaura kudaura kuna zvinhu zvakadaro ndochi nonzi chipere icho chezvo chiri kuitwa nevarume mukati menyika ine vakadzi mukati menyika ine and as long as we do not respect our traditional value systems we will remain a rotten country vana vacha vachisina nyadzi vasikana vacho they have numerous affairs mujolo after mujolo they think they are enjoying life that is why we are where we are today. We are where we are today because I could just see now who I could just see my values. People think they can just date Murume one again, it's okay, but they forget that they're also going to get married. And when they get married, are they going to be okay with their hubby coming home at 3 a.m. because I got a young girl? These are things that people don't think about, and these men also forget that they're going to get old. And when they get old, they become so vulnerable. I've heard a lot of them crying in their old age. Yes, they'll see their mothers because their mothers were there for them. The time you were supposed to be there for the children, you were out from Jolo, go back from Jolo, and be seen by them Jolo. These are realities that we should start thinking about. How many men even have time to do homework with their children? How many men even have time to walk their children to school? get to buy my daughter, buy my son. They've got time to be in bars watching Liverpool and Arsenal, but they don't have time with their children. They've got time to go out with Mujolo, but they've never gone out with their families. So what kind of society are we building? That's food for thought. And I'm not here. I can go Garagumba. I know what I have. Garagumba. Kuvagumba go ogenda kuchina. Chema zimai. Can I end up with going to church in a sand? Do going out here no ziva you. As a kum jola ni gachine swa kwese ku gochi gochi ku oli de kupi. But maya kumba wajisi. Vana will be watching. Don't think that children are stupid. So at the end of the day, we need to get families reconnected, reunited, and functioning like families. That is very important. Okay, before we close, Linda, uh, there's a recent post that was posted on X, formerly Twitter by Shadaya, or saying that women who go to work are harlots, so to say. What do you have to say about that? I, I think I actually responded to him and said, a one-size-fits-all jacket does not work. If we are supposed to call anyone to order about what happens in the workplace, we need to call them into order because they're the ones who are abusing women at the workplace. So we've got a lot of things that we also need to, to change in our mindsets. Some women are there, they seduce their bosses, they seduce the men at work because they are in extra cash. But if some women are doing it, it doesn't mean that the are are supposed to be painted with the wrong brush because you're already putting a negative stereotype on all women. That was even better. Yesterday was bashing fat women. Fat women one on one, fat women also. So I was thinking about it today in the morning. That an African woman is naturally voluptuous. So if we have our own African men now identifying what a woman is using Eurocentric lenses, then at least in our room, we can Africa. Because we can do a lot of things. Since time immemorial, and we pride ourselves with our calves. But can tell us also to know what you need to unfit. Ah, that was a drama. All right, thank you so much. That was Linda Masarira. Today we are talking about cyberbullying and uh, sexual harassment in workplaces. Join us in yet another episode where we profile and talk to women this swimming month. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We are Sly Media.